What's up, guys? We're seven weeks out now, 2013 NAS National Championships. Today I was hit and pressing. Went up to Tread's Gym in Chicago to see my buddy Trevor. Great gym. Get, go check it out if you get a chance. Started off with doing log presses out of the rack. We're doing pressing into the bands to work the top half to start priming the central nervous system for more power at the top. Started with doing a five rep scheme, five or four reps, depending on how I felt. Put it down, move the weight up, about 10 pounds, do it again, four or five reps. And then now I did a 20 pound jump, but we're doing a three rep scheme. Slowing down the, uh, bringing down the number of reps, but also increasing the amount of weight we're doing. And then again, another 10 pound jump up. So now we're hitting 225 uh, against the bands. The next set I did was 235 pounds, the final set of three that I was hitting. Everything felt good. I really like pressing against the bands. I definitely have to utilize this a lot more. I definitely felt my lockout was getting a lot stronger from doing this. But now I'm switching over to singles without the bands. Just to try to see what I could hit as a big one rep max out of the rack. I came here about five months ago in March. We did the same thing, press out of the rack, hitting big singles. I ended up working up to a 275, but definitely didn't go up as easy as that. My lockout power has gotten a lot better. I think my push pressing also, just the leg drive has gotten a lot better too. The weights were flying up today. I was really shocked at the numbers I was putting up. Very, very happy. 285 obviously was my PR. We worked up. I ended up hitting 295, which flew up also. I was very, very happy with how the weights were going up today. This is 305. Now, I always said, don't ever miss a weight. I was very confident I could hit 305. It screwed with my head just because I've never hit 305 before, and that's also the weight for the competition at Nationals that I need to be hitting. So this would be the first time ever trying to attempt it. So I definitely went, I wanted to go again. And I ended up getting it very, very happy. Kind of wobbly at the top, but I'll definitely take the big PR. And I decided to stop there and just focus on accessory work after that. We ended up doing the Viking press, which was absolutely monstrous. I'll put a link below. I have a video for that. It was just 25 minutes of hell. Now, last week I said I was going to be taking off a deadlift for a few weeks. So I decided to do just a bodybuilding style back workout. Pull-ups, chest support rows, dumbbell rows, seated shrugs. And then upper back work, cable flies, face pulls, just to get some blood pumping in the back. It was kind of a nice slow day for me because I'm not used to that. Now today was my squat repetition day. I decided to go with some front squatting, but I threw a pause in at the bottom. I did about a three second count in my head. And now it's not going to be exactly three seconds, but it's going to be close enough to accomplish the goals that I wanted of just completely stopping all the recoil or rebound out of the bottom. Just give me some time to pause, stop, reset, and then come back up. It's going to be pretty good carryover when you go to do, say, stones, where you lap the stone, and then you got to come up with it instead of, let's say, a normal front squat. When you bottom out the front squat, you come back up. It's not going to mimic a stone as much because of the lapping part, then the loading transition. You have to have that pause in the middle to get that nice carryover. So with this front squat rep day I did today, I was doing a three rep scheme and moving up the weight 20 pounds, three more reps, 20 more pounds until let's call it a near failure and see where I was going to end up at. With my front squatting, my technique, I definitely could tell I need a little bit more tweaking in it. I haven't really been videotaping myself before, but now watching it, I can see I definitely do need to keep sitting farther back. I feel like the weight's a little bit farther forward. I do have kind of a kyphotic posture. I need to get a nice uh, arch in my thoracic, and maybe my knees need to start bone coming out more. I feel like the video doesn't do it justice. I really don't feel like my knees are coming in, per se, but the video is making it seem like that. I might have to change the angle just to kind of play with, uh, see how my technique looks from the front or from the back, see if my knees are actually driving in. But 305 right now. Got a nice pause going on. It's starting to starting to work up to a 95% effort now. 
but this was it. This was my last set of threes. It was 325. Now the first one wasn't too bad. Definitely felt strong. Went right through the movement. Now the next two, not so much. Really had to work for that one. The last one I did, felt like it took about five minutes to get the bar up. Obviously it's not that long, or anywhere near that long, but I get stuck right in the middle, and right there I always get stuck right there, and I always have to try to grind it out at the top. Overall, it was a good day, but I ended up switching over to singles now just to kind of play with some heavier weight, get the CNS Prime for next week. 335 for a single. Good pause at the bottom. Good technique. I like it. 345 now. Wasn't sure where I was going to end up with these big singles, but I kind of wanted to see where I was going to be at about 95%. I could definitely tell that was about 92. Starting to struggle. This was going to be my last set for singles. 355 for a pause at the bottom. Had to work for this one, so I decided just to stop after I ended up getting this one up. Called it a day at that. My accessory work-wise, we ended up doing this leg press ladder. You do one plate on each side for 10, two plates for 20, three plates for 30. We went all the way up to five plates for 50. Needless to say, walking was kind of an issue after that. Now today we have our strongman rep day, speed day. The first option I had, I had to do pressing. I went with dumbbell pressing today. The goal was to get 10 reps with my right arm, switch it over, do 10 reps with my left arm, then bump the weight up to the next dumbbell. So we started off 110. Everything felt good. I liked it. Keeping the dumbbell up in the air was a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. So at least when I drop the dumbbell and have to re-clean it, I get, my shoulder gets a little bit of break. But when I have the dumbbell up on my shoulder the whole time, it's constantly under tension. So I feel like maybe hypertrophy work is pretty good, but maybe for an overall strength thing, maybe not so much. Definitely is going to give me that endurance, though. When I start doing dumbbell presses with my left arm, I can tell I'm not as strong. The coordination just isn't there. I'm just so used to doing it with my right arm. You still need to get that work in with the left arm, so maybe... I can eventually do get the coordination for it, but for now, I'll just keep moving up the weight with my left arm as much as I can until I kind of fail. Then I just keep going with my right until my right fails. And my right will probably fail about, about 30 pounds heavier than my left arm. So now we bump the weight up. This was the next heaviest dumbbell we have for our circus dumbbells. It's 130 pounds. Sticking to that same 10, 10 rep scheme. 10 reps, don't put the weight down. It was a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. It's 130 pounds, but I clean and press every rep. I could probably get, you know, 10, 12 reps in a minute, and it's not really an issue. But holding the weight up the whole time and doing it for 10 reps, even though it was only about 30 seconds, it was still, still a good burner. So I even started struggling near the end. <laughs> yeah. Now I switched over to the left arm. And again, you can kind of see when I start pressing, the elbow doesn't lock out all the way. Like, I still need to drive through the weight. Well, these first few reps aren't too bad, but I think as the weights go on, I start having to struggle with that lockout part of it. Right there, you can see I get a little twick, tweak in my elbow. I kind of have to force the weight to lock out, whereas the other arm, I really don't have to. It probably has a lot to do with also on Tuesday when I was at Tread's gym and went through the most hellacious pressing endurance volume day I've probably ever had since I started training with Strongman. So my triceps, my elbows, my shoulders were completely fried from that. So I came in today not really expecting big numbers, but I was still happy with what I did. I know I wasn't going to get 10 with the 50, so I shot for 5. And just a side note too, completely off topic. It was pouring outside and the gym got flooded. You can see the, the pressing mat. I had to stand in the corner because it was kept dripping down on us. But yeah, it was fun. What sucks is I wanted to end up doing car deadlifts today, but it ended up raining, so I had to do frame deadlifts again. 
I need to start getting that motor pattern ready for nationals. But I was doing the left hand now with 150. I got it up, my elbow said, no, nope, you're not doing another one. So I was just listened to my body and called it quits. Now the frame deadlift, I was shooting for 10 reps. If I got it, I'd move up to the next weight, 10 reps, move up to the next weight. I was also finally got one of the power lifters and one of my teammates to help me out putting the deadlift suit on. It finally got on tight enough where it fits now. It's on nice and snug. I felt like any weight that I could pick up was going up without an issue. I did have one problem though. It was very hard to breathe. I have to play with how tight to make the belt because how I normally, how tight I normally make it, I don't think I can make it that tight because uh, I was having trouble breathing near the end of some of these sets. Now, last week I worked up to 7.10 for 10. I kind of struggled at the end. Threw the suit on, now it's 7.50. I hit 10, didn't even break a sweat with it. As long as the weight stayed in line. So, I ended up bumping it up to 8.40. Now... I know I could have hit 10 with this, but I pulled it up for one. I lost all my oxygen. I almost passed out, so I just called it quits. Now the last thing we have today is some keg loading. Didn't really feel like getting all the stuff ready for stones to start doing my stone load, so I just did some cardio with a 200 pound keg loading. It was good endurance. My lower erectors are fried from it. So I was happy with how it turned out. Earlier in the day, the first thing I did, I didn't have a video of it. I was doing a little bit of the yoke. I didn't want to push it, so I only ended up working up to about 430 pounds, I believe. And I was walking with it as slow as possible. All I intended to do was just trying to get my central nervous system ready for heavier weights. I don't plan on trying to do any sprints with it leading up to nationals. I'm only going to be getting used to having the weight on my back. I don't want to risk any injury. So all my sprint work with weight is probably going to be done with the frame. And then like I said, I'll just do all my walking with the yoke and no sprinting with it just to get ready for having that weight on my back and hopefully it'll carry over. The sprinting with the yoke on my back has been giving me a lot of low back pain. You know, if I get hurt during nationals, I won't be as upset than if I get hurt a few weeks before while I'm doing something dumb in training. You know, and that was about it for my training week this week. I just, like I said, I was finishing off today with some really, really heavy volume burnouts with this 200 pound keg until I was pretty exa pretty much exhausted, didn't want to do it anymore. I was really happy with that 300 pound log this week. The deadlift suit is coming together. Hopefully next week it won't be raining so we can actually do some car deadlifting outside and get that motor pattern set. No, but other than that, uh, big shout out to Treads Gym. Awesome gym. If you guys are in Chicago, I think it's in Lincoln Park. Go check it out. I'll leave a link below for the site. Then Pride Nutrition, sponsor for our Power Core Strongman team. And of course, Jacked Hardcore Gym. Alright, thanks for watching guys. See you next week.